How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Diablo 1, the Belzebub mod. I just arrived at level 8, and I just went to town, and no one had any new quests to assign or anything. My guess is that I'll have to, like, find something down here on level 2 to trigger whatever my next quest may be. I can never remember which quests are on which level, so I, I honestly don't know what to expect here. These guys appear to just not feel like spitting any acid. Ah, uh, there they go. They waited till they really got point blank. You guys spit your acid and I'll shoot my bow and arrows point blank, where they're both most effective, I'm sure. Oh, but that was very annoying. Their, their anti-mana ring that they were blasting out there. That's very annoying to have your mana wiped out. Luckily, I don't use it often, but I do like to have it for the few times where I desperately need to, like, heal or call a town portal or any such thing. That's not just a bat. What is this? The gargoyle. Oh, shit, and they die really cool, too. And I think they can I think they can actually perch to, and turn to, to turn to stone. Oh, man, even just the, the sound that they make when you attack them is cool. It kind of sounds like stone. It kind of sounds like stone, but not really. What is going to happen if I read all three of those spell books? This is a quest that I'm unfamiliar with. I'm not even sure if it's a quest. It might just be... It might be a little isolated encounter of some kind, but I'm going to not read all of them until I kill everything in the surrounding area. Does everyone just want to take a moment and appreciate how funny the word gargoyle is? I was just, like, literally yesterday trying to think of what some of my favorite words are, and it's a difficult thing to think of when you put yourself on the spot like that, but without a doubt, in the moment, the best one I could think of was gargoyle. Oh, that guy, yeah, he was totally camping out as a stone dude, and I think he, I think he heals that way. Hmm, I think Diablo 1 is the only one that has gargoyles. A huge amount of the enemies from this game make it into future installments of the game, like the goat men are there, the fallen, skeletons obviously, the glooms like the bath, bats, uh, I'm not sure if acid beasts specifically are, but there's like leapers, which are very similar, chaos web, oh god, and he just has mastery? This guy just is a master of things? Of what? Of golf? He has his web, maybe he's a master of like ecology. Went, went to school for two to three years and got his masters in ecology. Just wanted to do what was best for his goat herd, right? But yeah, I think this is the only game, might be the only game acid beasts are in, but definitely, definitely the only one that gargoyles are in. Which is kind of funny, maybe they just started to lean more heavily on enemies that they felt were more unique. Like, satyrs and things like that obviously exist, but this form of Goatman is pretty unique to Diablo. And you know what, that would kind of explain why they chose to name them the Kazra, Kazara, whatever it is, in, in Diablo 3, rather than just calling them the Goatmen, or, or just calling them Night Clan, or whatever. They gave them this whole backstory and everything. Probably, it's probably all in an effort to make it, like, stuff that, make it enemies and things that are very specific to Diablo. And that's kind of cool to think about, that that's, that could have been a strong influence on, on how they approached the sequels and chose to design enemies. It's pretty speculative, but it seems like a pretty good theory, doesn't it? Maybe there's interviews and stuff that confirm or deny that. Alright, well I think I've killed enough things I can read the rest of these spell books. I'm gonna get some bad luck here, and this is gonna be like a weird thing that you can do that summons Diablo early or something, and all of a sudden I'm gonna be fighting Diablo. Hmm. I do more words in that one. Oh, it's so predictable. <laughs> Predictable opium. Hmm. Seems to have all been for nothing, though. I have no idea. I have no idea what those books are all about. I don't remember having seen them before, or... They they might just not ring a bell because they don't contribute anything. Oh, did I find the way down to level 9 already? Cool. I'm pretty sure that's where the caves are at. It's either, it's either 9 or 10 is the first level of the caves, and those run till... 13, I think. 
no point guessing. I'll make it there soon enough, and then we'll just have that confirmed one way or the other. I'm kind of trying to clear out things immediately surrounding the spell book area to see if maybe it activated anything. If there's any discernible consequence of that. Book of Inferno. I think that was new. Oh, maybe I did already have that one. Oh, I did already have Inferno, but I think it recharges your mana a little bit when you learn a spell. But Book of Elemental that I also picked up, I cannot use. And I'm pretty much nowhere near being able to use. It needs like 68. Lock in another waypoint though, don't mind if I do. Hey wait, this should help break things up. I think there's like 16 levels altogether. So now we're, we're gonna have Tristram 2, 4, 6. I guess it doesn't show the one you're at, so then 10. 12, 14, 16. Does that make sense? 16 levels? I think that sounds right. So we're right around the halfway point of this this dungeon. I'm not sure if the, the first or second half is any faster or slower, as you have to get stronger and things like that, but maybe level layouts start getting bigger. I have no idea. I have no idea which end is longer, but that gives you a fair idea of perhaps how long this, uh, this series could run for. Funny that so many different enemy types will just hang out in a room together and not tear each other to shreds. Not a lot of, like, speciesism in in the underworld. Everyone's just real chill down there. Oh, we, we better look out for each other. I mean, after all, we all come from the same fifth dimension of hell. We all, <laughs> we all know what it's like to grow up there together. Doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. How long your wings, whether or not you have horns, or whether or not you're literally just made of a construct of flaming molten lava. We all have a shared history and we can all set those differences aside and get together. A lot of positive messages that come out of hell. Some of that just gets muddied though, it gets lost behind all the maiming and torture. People forget about the good. I feel like I'm putting together an infomercial or something, the way that they have like are you looking for a new place to live? Move to Pleasant Heights, where everyone's your neighbor. Come move to Hellspawn Valley, where everyone's your neighbor. We have a beautiful park for the children to play in, an excellent school system, the shopping district is just around the corner, and your skin will burn for eternity. Ah, uh, let's listen to the sexy narrator talk about the Sin War. Demons travel to the mortal realm in search of the three brothers. These demons were followed to the mortal plane by angels who hunted them throughout the vast cities of the East. The angels allied themselves with a secretive order of mortal magi named the Herodrim, who quickly became adept at hunting demons. They also made many dark enemies in the underworlds. I'm trying to think how well this makes sense with the lore that's now established in the later games and specifically in Diablo 3 because I think how it was set up I have this on screen for you guys to look at again but I'll mute it it had something to do with an outcast angel or demon or it was like an angel and a demon who decided to bump uglies and they made the Nephilim which were like the humans or like the first like mortal but they weren't totally mortal because they obviously were angels and demons. And then they made like a haven for them, like a safe place, which ended up being like the mortal plane. I can't remember the dude's name, In Inarius or whatever. I don't know. He's a bad guy in, in two and three, I think. The like corrupted angel or whatever. I think he was significant to that plot. But then over time, the Nephilim like bred down and just made like regular humans. But then now and again, someone would hit the genetic lottery and have, like, an extra amount of angel or demon blood and then still be really strong and powerful. And Diablo 3, the characters that you play as, are always referred to as the Nephilim. And that's because they have strong ancestral ties to, like, those original humans that were put on Earth by the angels and demons or by that, that like, secretly put here by the angels and demons. And then... Everyone was like, oh shit, something to rule over? We've been looking for that all of our lives. Then both the angels and demons had to like compete for their souls. 
because they were like considered being weak-willed mortals. It would be like really easy to to take over and rule over. So they, everyone just went for it. Spine wing the cold, but uh, then then they started fighting, encountering the Nephilim, who were able to like resist them because they had the powers of angels and demons. I think I mentioned before that the plot of Diablo three things start getting a little bit odd. The plot serviceable. But I liked it when things were a little bit more simple like they are here in Diablo 1. You're on Earth and the devil has found his way here and uh, you gotta kill him and his army of demons. Maim the Howler. There's a lot of blank the blanks floating around in these last two levels here. You just didn't think Maim was a cool enough name as is? Oh come on, come out, come out of your dumb shell there. That's dope. Uh, I probably, if I had to score myself, I'd say my retelling of the events of, of like Diablo 3 and all that and how humans ended up on Earth and everything. Probably like a 7 out of 10. I'm probably screwing up a few details, leaving out some major things. I, I can't say for sure, but that's more or less the plot of that game and how they've chosen to establish the lore and the book with the Sin War there. Uh, it just kind of made it seem like angels and demons just came to Earth to, to fuck shit up. Doesn't It kind of leaves out the part that humans are only exist because of angels and demons. I feel like I'm starting, starting to get into more advanced items and weaponry here. I'm finding better, stronger things. Unfortunately, that's something I can't make use of. But hopefully it's a, a good signaler that I will be finding better, cooler things soon. Replace some of this gear that I've had for an awfully long time at this point. Hmm, made it most of the way through 8 at this point, I think, without, uh, without any real quest setups. Uh, it makes sense that so many gargoyles would hang out around books. Oh god, there's even more than I thought. Isn't it a thing that gargoyles always perch on like the corners of cool big buildings like libraries? They would just they just like to generally surround themselves by books. Very learned creatures. What about gargoyles from the old classic gargoyle TV show, which was the fucking best by the way for anyone who didn't watch it. That game, that movie that, that TV show is unreal. I hope I hope it's as good as I remember it being. I'll probably never rewatch it cuz I don't want to accidentally ruin like such a perfect vision I have of that TV show in in my mind. But they like perch and hang out on a library, right? It was a kids show. They probably aren't hanging out outside of like a creepy old cemetery or something. Infravision? What the fuck is infravision? Am I, am I gonna Am I gonna suddenly turn on like thermal vision or something like the Predator? Whoa! That is basically exactly what that is. <laughs> Have I used this once before in this in this playthrough? This feels somewhat familiar now that I've activated it. It's the kind of shit you start to forget when uh, when a playthrough gets broken up across like nine months. Oh, there's something in that room, isn't there? Is that just something that died? Oh, there's just like a puddle on the floor or something there. I thought it was like maybe a pedestal. Something of vague significance. That's the worst sounding Zelda game of all time. Zelda and the something of vague significance. Hmm, shit. I think with the exception of the room that the staircase itself is in, I might have just cleared out all of eight already. Oh, and I mostly cleared out this room too. It's just a bunch of shitty barrels. Ah, but then there's an extra corner. An extra corner that could lead to fun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, what's that dude's name? Is that Zara the Mad? Or is that a guy from like number two or three or something? Oh, that's definitely something for, from two. Who is this then? This is like the Archbishop or something. The Archbishop Lazarus? Is this Lazarus? He's the guy who brought the king's son, kingly Oryx's son, down to the catacombs or the cathedral or however far down he had to go to make that happen and then used him as a conduit to summon Diablo. The reason that King Leorg went mad and the town went to shit is all this guy's fault and then the reason that Diablo's here killing everyone, also this guy's fault. If this is who I think it is, which I'm pretty excited about. Oh, it is Zara the Mad. 
Lazarus is way down on like 14 or something. He's pretty shortly before Diablo. Is this guy in Diablo 2 as well? Oh, I just have to look it up. I'm thinking of the summoner in Diablo 2. That's who I'm thinking of. Look at the way he's got his... No one stands like that. No one waves their arm around like that. He must be mad. It's obvious now. I have always said Zara the Mad. Turns out it's just Zara the Mad, which is really weirding me what? out. Why are you here? All these interruptions are enough to make one insane. As <laughs> if he wasn't already. Leave me to my work. Trouble me no more. It sounds like a character that like Mark Hamill would voice. <laughs> sounds ever so slightly Mark Hamill like, wouldn't you say? Well, that's uh Thank you for that. I, whoops, I would have appreciated uh, a bit better of a gift. There's not a lot I can do with that, so I'm definitely going to pester you some more. Oh, vampiric. I should be careful. N oh, I know. I know what will piss him right off. Uh, your curiosity will be the death of you. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, he fucking teleports. <laughs> oh, but he's also not that strong. Guess you should have focused a little bit more on, I don't know, his cardio or something. Did I break your concentration? I always love that line, too. I love how sassily every single character delivers it. No matter who you're playing as, everyone has the same... Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. Oh, I know what I'll do. Chuck down a town portal. Oh, whoops. No, I shouldn't have done that. Well, that is a complete total sweep of level 8, then. Unfortunately, I have to, like, get going, so I gotta wrap this up quickly here. And then... Next time when I come back, I'm going to have to use my waypoint and rerun through that level again. Hopefully next time I record, I can sit down and do like four levels at once or something so that I don't have to like keep resetting things like that. I found a couple half-decent swords, but nothing that I can really do anything useful with. Geed? Maybe I should gamble with Geed really quickly. Could really use a new bow. My cap is kind of shitty. I'll try the longbow, we'll see. Plus six to all attributes. That ain't so bad. And the bow is pretty shitty. I'd be missing out on finding magic items, which I don't find a ton of anyways, and regenerating health. One life per five seconds, though. Okay, that's trash. That thing sucks. Six to all attributes, though? That's pretty friggin' sweet. I obviously only get to see a two difference to my strength, but I get to see a pretty decent boost to everything else, so heck yeah. Oh shit, this thing actually does a lot of damage. I'll buy it. I'll buy it because I want to compare how my damage per second would change here. It goes down by quite a bit. Shit, because this one also has the fire damage and the very fast attack speed. Alright, well you get out of here. Thanks for selling me that shitty bow. And thank you guys all so much for watching. I will see you again soon.